All right, let's jump right in. Today, we're tearing down a release that has everybody talking, from the Home Lab heroes to the Enterprise pros. The much-awaited Proxmox VE 9.1. Let's get into what makes this update such a big deal. So right off the bat, the source material hits us with this quote, and honestly, it nails it. This isn't your average bug fix patch, no. This is Proxmox making a statement. They've packed this release with some really meaningful platform shifting improvements. So what's under the hood? Well, Proxmox 9.1 is sitting on top of the rock solid Debian 13.2, also known as Trixie. And it's shipping with the new, very powerful, and as we'll find out later, slightly tricky Linux kernel 617.2. This modern foundation is what makes all the cool new features possible. Okay, this is the part you've been waiting for. We're gonna kick things off with the big game changers, the features that are gonna open up brand new ways for you to use and manage your Proxmox environment. The first one is huge, OCI image support. Now, if you've ever touched Docker or Podman, you've used OCI or Open Container Initiative images. It is the universal standard for containers and bringing it to Proxmox is a massive move. And this really shows you the difference in a nutshell. Before, you were kind of stuck using these specific LXC templates, but now you can pull and run containers directly from the same standard OCI images you use everywhere else. This plugs Proxmox right into that massive container ecosystem. We're talking a whole new level of flexibility here. Let's get real for a second. If you're running modern Windows guests, you've probably felt this pain. Have you ever tried to snapshot a Windows 11 VM that has a TPM, especially when its disk is sitting on an NFS or a CIFS share? Yeah, it's been a major, major headache. Well, guess what? Proxmox 9.1 fixes it. The virtual TPM state now gets stored right inside the QCOW2 disk file itself. Why does that matter? It means the snapshot problem is just gone. It's one of those quiet behind the scenes changes that removes a massive roadblock for anyone running modern VMs. Nested virtualization also got a whole lot smarter. I love this sledgehammer analogy the source uses for the old way. You basically had to expose your entire host CPU to the guest. It was a bit of a blunt instrument. Now it's more like a surgical tool. You can pick and choose specific features to enable on a per virtual CPU basis. It's just way more secure and a lot more efficient. And for you networking folks, this one is for you. Software-defined networking gets a massive visibility boost in the GUI. You can finally see which guests are plugged into which networks. You can view learned IP and MAC addresses and see all your fabric details right there in the tree. If you've ever tried to troubleshoot a complex SDN setup, you know this is an absolute lifesaver. Now, beyond those headline features, this release is just stuffed with these fantastic quality of life improvements. You know, the practical little updates that fix those everyday annoyances and just make being an admin that much easier. I mean, we've all been there, right? You've got a whole group of VMs for one project, all neatly tagged, and you need to reboot or move all of them. Clicking through them one by one by one, it's just tedious. Well, that chore is officially a thing of the past. Proxmox 9.1 finally gives us what we've been asking for, data center level bulk actions. You can now select a whole group of guests and do a bulk restart, a bulk migration, or a bulk shutdown. This is a monster time saver. And the little GUI fixes don't stop there. You can right click on your tags now to manage whole groups. The mobile interface got a nice refresh. The icons actually look good on high DPI screens now. And the memory warnings are a lot smarter. It's just clear the devs are really listening to user feedback. Okay, we've gone over all the cool new stuff, but now we need to switch gears because this next part is maybe the most important section of this whole explainer. We need to talk about that new kernel and the warnings that come with it. You're gonna wanna pay close attention here. So let's be crystal clear about this. The new kernel 6.17 is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's got better performance and supports newer hardware. But on the other, it introduces some pretty serious risks for certain setups. You absolutely cannot upgrade without understanding these potential gotchas. So let's break this down point by point. First, if you're running on certain Dell PowerEdge servers, people are seeing machine check errors. Second, if you use NVIDIA vGPU, the drivers aren't compatible yet. And third, the DRBD storage module is failing to build. For the NVIDIA and DRBD issues, the workaround is the same. You have to manually pin your system to the older kernel 6.14.
So knowing all that, how do you actually pull off this upgrade safely? Well, that brings us to our final and most actionable part of the explainer, your upgrade checklist. Think of this as your pre-flight checklist. Step one, and I can't say this enough, full backups, always. Step two, go ahead and run the upgrade itself. Step three, and this is crucial, if you use NVIDIA vGPU or DRBD, you have to pin your kernel back to 6.14. And finally, step four, before you do anything, go check the official forums. See what other people are experiencing in the real world. And that pretty much wraps it up. There's no doubt that Proxmox 9.1 is a powerful step forward. It brings in new standards, a ton of convenience, and a lot of modern features. But with those kernel risks, it's not a blind jump. It requires a little bit of planning. So the real question is, after hearing all this, is your setup ready for the leap? Thanks for tuning in.